can you please explain what is fundamentally fundamentally meant by the term defund the police because a lot of people don't get it and as far as i'm concerned all i see are the place where we're talking about reallocating those dollars towards so people need to understand that this is in the benefit of the programs we have so i'm sorry so, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll jump in I, I got the nod you know the 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 defund the police construct i think is is about this reallocation and understanding that there's a need for comprehensive ground up um, criminal justice reform um, in a way that completely rethinks how um, communities are engaged when uh, communities particularly in crisis and, and de completely deconstructing and pulling out any semblance of institutional and structural racism and classism out of the constructs of, of policing. And so, um, you know, I, I, I believe that there's opportunities as someone who is a public health provider of violence prevention, I believe violence is a public health issue. And from that construct and from that lens, there's spaces and places where the a Department of Behavioral Health will be better suited to respond to a issue than law enforcement. So for a good example, um, there in the criminal justice system, there's uh, persons in need of supervision, young people in the juvenile justice uh, construct is called PINs, or it's called um, uh, uh, um, status offenses, truancy, uh, staying out past curfew. Right now, in most cities, including the city that I live in, this is a, a largely a law enforcement response. Law enforcement comes and engages these young people and, and, and then either takes them in or takes them home. But that's an interaction with law enforcement that really doesn't need to occur. It actually, if we build out a system, a system of um, uh, uh, of, of safe harbor and safe spaces and safe response from community and community has the hotline number, OIC has a hotline where if in individuals in Philadelphia or wherever you sit in Chester are saying, hey, there's a group of young people that are three o'clock in the morning out in front of this location, instead of getting a law enforcement response, you get a community-based response saying, hey, what what can I what can we help you with? You can't you know you can't be out here. Let's move you. Do you need a place to stay? Do you need a place to eat? Do you need services? Can we take you home? And then when you get home, if there's an environment where that home needs wraparound services, needs access um, to education, economics, housing, um, and environmental justice issues, then that those nonprofits, those community-based organizations, or those non-law enforcement government organizations are in a place to provide support. So, but all of that needs funding, right? And that funding needs to come from somewhere. So as, as we transition from a, a, a law enforcement centric response to community, um, that, that those resources need to be provided to the organizations that are going to respond in lieu of law enforcement. So that's how I consume the, the defund the police hashtag. So everything you just said that, and I'm not gonna repeat it um, uh, cause you said it perfectly. And I get really upset because people act like they don't know what we're talking about. Although you keep explaining it over again. And it's, a, it's a, and you know, I'll, I'll just come at it from a political perspective. There's a big difference between abolish police and defund police. There is a big difference. If we were saying, which I am an abolitionist and I wanna live in a world where we don't need police, um, where we have, where the services that we provide are set up in such a way that the role of police becomes so um, little, if you will, probably not the right word, so much so reduced in our communities that eventually we don't need police at all. That's a dream of mine. You know, whether we'll ever get there, I don't know. But that's not what this movement is about right now. Um, as uh, Reverend Mitchell has said, it's about equitable, um, equ it's about equity, yes, but it's also about, I believe, and that's why I think the word, the term defund police is so important that you have not 
upheld the respect and uh, service to the community in which you should have. And therefore, there needs to be a reallocation of funds away from uh, this particular line of enforcement, right? We need a new way. We need something different is the campaign that Until Freedom um, is uh, uh, now embarking upon. So yes, we need the language to be hard because the people dying is hard. It's, it's not about being politically correct. Someone said on my page the other day, we went from F the police, which we used to say, to now we're saying defund the police and that's a problem. And you really kind of just want us to say, please stop killing us, please, please, please. Well, we tried that, it didn't work, right? Colin Kaepernick kneeled quietly and they said he was disrespecting the flag. And they're going to try their best to use, and, and we are sucked into it as people who are supposed to be liberal, supposed to be progressive. We're being sucked into their plan. The strategy is to keep us all arguing about the title and the slogan defund the police and therefore keep our attention shifted away from what we really need to be talking about, which is the plan. Because yeah. everyone is so focused on the slogan, even President Obama, who I love, but I've had to challenge uh, President Obama on his statements about the slogan. I get it. If you don't like it, that's fine. But guess what? We as activists and the people on the ground and the place where defund the police really rose from um, and where it was birthed. They, we don't have to have the same language as legislators and leaders um, in places, uh, in positions of power uh, that can make real decisions about the actual plan. You come and tell us, tell us, we decided we calling it pin the tail on the donkey. And this is what the plan is. And we're going to say pin the tail on the donkey it is. That's great. They don't want to do that. They want us to get caught up in a conversation about slogans because they know that it will keep us fighting and, and being divided uh, within our organizations and within our movement. And I think that what we should do, someone says, Shonique, oh, that's you, oh, no, Shonique, uh -huh. mm -hmm. says it's a distraction. Um, and it is a distraction. And I think at this point, what we have to do is keep our eyes on the ball. And every time someone starts talking about how the language is so dangerous, say, okay, fine, put it to the side, call it whatever you want, but let's get to how it's going to actually happen. Right. Um, so, I, you know, that's the only other thing that I would share.